everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. Again, I'm focusing on Unit 3 because the exam is coming up very, very soon. And so many of you have contacted me saying that you need extra help on this. So this time, this particular video is looking at question number three and the help that I can provide you for it. The key thing to understand about question number three is that it's usually related to the experiment that you've carried out in part A, and it's also related to the questions that you've done in the first part of the paper, mainly question number one. The question is worth around eight to 10 marks, mostly eight marks, and it asks you about the variables. So things like the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the control variables. It will ask you questions about how you controlled the variables or if there were any variables that you didn't control control or couldn't control. Why did you control those variables? How did that help your investigation? And in terms of repeatability and reliability, how could you improve your experiment that you did as part A? The last part of the question is always asking you about how to extend the investigation. And I'll go through what each of these mean as we see the questions. But what the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that I showed you some classic examples from the past year so you can start to understand and some of the common themes that arise in these questions. So for June 2017, there was the part A was about um, being an assistant groundkeeper in a small inner city nature reserve, and you were asked to investigate how pH affects plant growth. And this is just basically how you needed to set up your tray. So this is taken exactly from part A. So question number three, the first part in this particular case asked about why weather was not a factor in the in the investigation when comparing the different areas of the small inner city nature reserves. Well, essentially what it's saying is that you can't control the weather, but also why was this not a factor in your, in your investigation? This particular investigation looked at a small inner city reserve, so just one nature reserve. So for two marks, the students could have said anything along the line of the areas that were tested in the one inner city nature reserve were part of the same nature reserve and they're tested quite close together in terms of the areas that are tested they're very close together that's what I mean by that and then the second mark could have gone to talk about the fact that because they're close together you'd expect them to have similar weather conditions so the students didn't have to account for different weather conditions because they were just looking at the same nature reserve so hopefully that makes a bit of sense as to why weather was not a factor. The second part of the question from the same year was asking you to identify two variables in the investigation that cannot be controlled. Now, if we're considering the fact that this was a um, investigation of the effect of pH on plants and plant growth, um, then the types of factors that I can't really have any uh, control over are things like shade or light because I can't control how much shade or how much light that particular plant is under. I can't control disease from pests. I cannot control the type of soil. I cannot control the mineral content of the soil. So any two of these would have been okay to mention. Part B of question three said, explain two ways in which you could extend your investigation to provide stronger support for your conclusions about the effect of soil pH on plant growth. Now, when we're talking about an extension, we're talking about what else could we do to help us support the conclusions that we've made? So you need to say two main points. And by explaining them, you would get the uh, four marks in total. So one mark for each of the points um, and one mark for the explanation for each of the points as well. So for something like this, I would expect my students to talk about things like repeating the experiment for different reserves in the inner city to extend the range of results. So that particular point there would get them two marks. You could talk about carrying out more repeats in the same area to give more reliable results. And you could also talk about different types of plants um, to see if the pH will def affect the different types of plant that's grown. Because in this particular experiment, they only grew one type of plant. So that would be an idea of how to extend the investigation. It's not enough just to say, oh, just do repeats, because that's not necessarily extending it. You need to explain why the repeats might help and where you might take your repeated investigation from. So for May 2018, this was the part A scenario. So it said you're a research scientist who works for an apple juice company, and you've been asked to find the optimum concentration of the enzyme pectinase to extract the maximum mass of juice from the apples. And this particular enzyme breaks down the apple cell walls to release the juice. Fine. That was part A. 
Question three for this part B paper said that the ripeness of the apples used in your investigation was a variable that could not be controlled. Part of the reason why you couldn't um, control that is one, that you can't assess the ripeness, and two, when the students did this investigation, it was the technicians that prepared the apple pulp. So that was quite important to, for the students to be able to remember. You might not know that because you've not done this particular experiment. Anyway, back to the question. It says, explain why the differences in ripeness did not affect your results. Well, when the technicians would have carried out the uh, part of the experiment to prepare the samples for the students, they would have basically mushed all of the apples. So basically, all the ripe apples and the unripe apples would have been mushed together and mixed up. And any differences that were caused by the ripeness would have been spread throughout the apple puree that was created. Again, when you look at this and you think, well, I wouldn't know that, it's probably because you've not done the experiment. When you come to your exam, you, in your part A, you will have that sheet, you will know exactly what you needed to do in terms of the method and what you'd be provided with. So part three will be easier for you guys to answer. Part Two of this particular question from the same year says identify two other variables that could not be controlled. You'll notice that this question has repeated from the previous year as well. So with this pectinase um, example, the two variables that I cannot control on this are things to do with the apple. So, for example, the consistency of the puree. The, that was prepared by the technicians. I can't control that. I also can't control the mixture uh, pH value. I can't control the types of apples. And also I can't control how much damage was done to the apple before pureeing because that might affect how much juice is available. You could also talk about the age of the apples as well, which I've not put on the slide, but it's something that's quite a valid response. Part B for May 2018 asks you to explain two ways that you could extend the investigation. Again, it's for four marks. Again, the question is identical to the year before. So this time it's saying, how could you extend your investigation to provide a more accurate value for the optimum concentration of pectinase? So for this particular one, when you're looking at things like enzymes and the extension, you probably again want to do more repeats for the same concentration to give more accurate results. You could also say, suggest that you carry out the experiment for the concentration of pectinase above a certain percentage. In part A of this, they said that you, you would have a concentration of 2% only, but 3% one might be more efficient. It, that might be more optimum um, for the particular task they wanted you to achieve. So you could suggest different concentrations of the enzyme as well to extend the range of results. So hopefully that's quite helpful. Again, just look at the themes, right? For the extension, we're looking at things like more repeats for the same concentrations to give more accuracy, carrying it out for different concentrations to extending the range of results. So you're basically just adding to your experiment. January 2019, this is where question three was worth 10 marks. And this was actually a physics type experiment that they set out. Part A said that you were a junior technician working in a laboratory of EvaCell, which is a company that makes cells and batteries. And you've been asked to test two random cells to check if they meet production standards. The scenario was set up in terms of voltage across the number of lamps in parallel. And question three basically said that you use the same voltmeter throughout your investigation. State what other variable you controlled. So did you use the same of anything else? So where the scenario is about different um, random cells to check that they meet production standards, you know that you're going to have to talk about the same battery to keep the voltage constant. You're also going to need to talk about the lamp. Now, cells and batteries store energy that can be transferred to a lamp to make it light. So you should also use the same lamp so that they can take the same current. So again, hopefully that's quite straightforward. Part B this time talked about repeatability and reproducibility. And this time it talked about how you can test the reliability of an investigation. So it said, explain two ways in which the reliability of your data could be tested. And this time it was worth for four marks. So this was where the extra two marks came from. Now, if we're testing the reliability of data, what we really want to do is make sure that we repeat the experiment multiple times, but every time we repeat it, we must keep the same apparatus. Another way of testing the reliability is to get other people to carry out the same experiment and then compare your results to theirs. And if they're similar, 
Part C of question three said one way of extending the investigation is by using an amateur to measure the current and the circuit. And then it says explain two other ways the investigation could be extended. Again, this is quite similar to the other two examples that we've seen. So for this particular experiment, if I'm going to extend the investigation, I really want to make sure that I'm looking at the lamps because those are the ones that are lighting up and so on. So maybe I would use lower voltage lamps to find the minimum voltage that's needed. I might add more batteries to increase the range of readings. I might also use different types of batteries to see if the results are the same. And the other thing I could do is this particular series, I think was, um, sorry, this particular question was in a parallel circuit, but I might put them, put the lamps in a series circuit to see if the circuit behaves the same. So for physics questions, think about whether it's parallel. If it is, then say that you could try it in a series, so on and so forth. So if you've watched my video on standard deviation, this is the experiment that they would have carried out. Question three for this experiment talks about a calorimeter and um, the material that it was made from was one of the variables that you would have controlled in the investigation. And then it says state two other variables that you controlled. Now, for anyone who doesn't know how a calorimeter works or how it's set up for this particular practical, what you needed to do was you needed to get a source of food and you needed to burn it. And when that food was on fire, you needed to put that underneath the um, calorimeter setup, and it would basically measure how quickly or to what temperature your water heated up in the calorimeter. If you struggle with understanding what that experiment is about, I would suggest you search on YouTube for this particular experiment because it will give you a visual representation of what the students did. So back to this question, state two other variables that you controlled in your investigation. Well, this particular one, you'd have controlled the volume of water in the calorimeter. Remember, if you've got a large amount of water, it's going to take longer to heat up. So you would make sure that for every food type, you had the same volume of water that you were trying to heat. You also needed to make sure that the distance of the burning food that you held at the bottom of the calorimeter was the same. So if you held the maize puffs five centimeters below the bottom of the calorimeter, then every other one would also be held five centimeters below. Part B of this question asks you to explain why the mass of the carbohydrate food was recorded before and after burning in your investigation. So this is for two marks. When you're looking at measurements that are taken before and after, the key thing is, is that they allow us to compare. So in this particular investigation, the fact that we took measurements before and after allowed us to be able to work out the loss or the change in mass from the start. If you didn't take it before, you didn't know what it was. So measuring it at the end would have made no difference. You'd have had no data. Some food may not have burnt. So recording it before and recording after to see if there was a difference would have been quite key. And another point you could make as well is that the measure of the mass of food burned is needed so we can calculate how much mass is lost per gram when we burn it. Part C said explain two ways in which you could extend your investigation. Again it's worth four marks, again it's worded exactly the same. So for part C in terms of extending this particular investigation we would talk about the fact that we could test different composition of food. So this one was testing carbohydrates or foods that were high in carbohydrates but maybe we could extend it by testing foods that were high in protein or foods that were high in fat to see if they give off more heat than carbohydrates. Another way that you could extend this is these foods were tested as a whole, so we didn't mush them or cut them or anything like that. If it was a popcorn, we literally just popped a needle into the popcorn and burnt it. But to extend it, you could crush all the foods before burning so that they're in their powder form to see if surface area has an effect on the burning of foods. And then lastly, another extension would be to say that you could time how long it takes for food to burn to see if the heat is released quicker in some of the foods. That wasn't something that students were asked to do this time, but that could be something that's a really good extension for this particular type of experiment. So I think as a summary, because I've been talking at you for so long, I think as a summary, it's really important to know which key points to make. So I've kind of summarized them on this particular side. The first thing I would say is always mention repeats. That's why I've said repeats, repeats, repeats. When we carry out repeats in scientific experiments, it's to obtain a more reliable mean. And it's also to check the reliability of our experiment. And that can also lead to validity. 
We could also test things like smaller increments. So say, for example, you're testing temperatures and you tested 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. You could test sort of smaller increments of every 10 degrees. So you could test 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And that can increase accuracy as well. In terms of controlling the variables, when you're controlling any variable, please remember to say the word same, okay? So same battery, same temperature, same surface area, same concentration, same apparatus setup. That will allow you to say how you're controlling your variables and whichever ones you're controlling and whichever part of the question you're answering. And then the last part of the question, which is always worth four marks, is to talk about the extension to the investigation. The, the term extend means to stretch the investigation further. What can you do to to draw more useful conclusions. So to do repeats is not necessarily extending the investigation, but if you do repeats to test different aspects, that is extending it. So for example, testing different food types or testing temperature if you tested surface area before, testing different acids if you tested hydrochloric acid, try another acid, for example. You could test different substrates, you could test different um, surface areas. So think about what it is that your experiment is about and think about what you could change to extend that investigation? What could you do to draw more useful conclusions? So hopefully that's been helpful for you guys in breaking down what question three will be about. I think question three is generally quite predictable, which is why I've created this, because you should be aware now that it will ask you about variables. It will ask you about controls and what you controlled and what you couldn't control and why you couldn't control it. And it will definitely ask you about extending your experiment. So these are the points that are worth thinking about when you're also doing your part A, if you've got time in that 45 minutes. Should you have any questions, guys, please just comment below my video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you share my video with anyone who you think might find it useful. Bye for now.